for our next calculation, we would like to calculate the density of gold, which has the atomic symbol, AU. We know from looking at our reference sources that the crystal structure of gold is the face-centered cubic structure, which has four atoms in a unit cell. We also know that the cell dimension, A, is going to be 407.833 picometers. We can figure out from examination of the periodic table that the atomic weight of gold is 196.96654 grams per mole of gold. Again, we're going to use the strategy that the density is an intensive property. So therefore, we can use any particular mass or volume combination that suits us. We are going to calculate the mass of one unit cell and the volume of one unit cell and use those data to calculate the density of gold. First, let's check the volume of a unit cell. We notice that the edge length A is 407.833 picometers, and this is by definition 10 to the minus 12 meters. We convert this particular length in two steps. First, we recognize that the 407 can be written as 4.07833 times 10 to the second power. And then we have our times 10 to the minus 12 meter part here. Then we recognize that I can regroup and first write the 4.07833 numeric part. And then I can calculate the powers of 10, the 10 to the second power times 10 to the minus 12. And that is equal to 10 to the minus 10 meters. As a side note, the dimension 10 to the minus 10 meters is equal to a unit called the angstrom, which is a non-SI unit. And the angstrom has this particular symbol. The angstrom is a useful unit to remember because the distances between atoms in molecules is roughly on the orders of angstroms. So typical bond lengths are one or two angstroms, depending. In the case of gold, it's four angstroms, but it's on the right order of magnitude for atomic dimensions in molecules. Our next step, having essentially shifted the decimal point for the edge length, we would like to convert this to the units of centimeters. We recall that one centimeter, by definition, is 10 to the minus 2 meters. So I can multiply by this conversion factor, which effectively acts like the number one. The units of meters cancel, and I'm going to be left with the proper dimensions that I want, which are the units of centimeters. I realize that 10 to the minus 10 divided by 10 to the minus 2 will give me a power of 10 of 10 to the minus 8. times 10 to the minus 8 centimeters. Having done that computation, we now recall that the volume of a cube is equal to a cubed, a to the third power. So we can compute the volume of one unit cell of gold by cubing this particular value. And if we do that, we get the dimension as being 67.83395 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. Even at this stage, we would like to apply a reasonableness test 
unit cells are very, very, very small. They're microscopic. So if you were to get a positive power of 10 at this point, that would suggest that unit cells were a macroscopic size, which doesn't make sense. So uh, if we don't get a negative exponent here, right away we would realize that we must have made a serious error. Our next step is to compute the mass of one unit cell of gold. So we recall that the atomic weight of gold is 196.96654 grams of gold are in one mole of gold. We also recall that by definition, one mole of gold consists of 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gold atoms. Last but not least, in this particular case, in a unit cell of gold, because it has the face-centered cubic structure, sometimes known as cubic close pack, that there are four gold atoms in a unit cell. And we use these data to compute the mass of exactly one unit cell of gold. So one mole of gold cancels one mole of gold. Gold atom cancels gold atom. And we're going to be left with, just kind of show here, the units that we want, which are grams of gold. And we see that the mass of one unit cell is going to be 130.831 times 10 to the minus 23 grams of gold. So we are able to determine the mass of a unit cell of gold just as we were able to compute the volume of a unit cell of gold. So now we can compute the density because this is going to be the mass of a unit cell divided by the volume of a unit cell. So this is just a matter of repetition here. So we have 130.831 times 10 to the minus 23 grams. And then the volume of a unit cell we had previously computed as being 67. 0.83395 times 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. And we saw already that what we're aiming to get is a density in terms of the units grams per cubic centimeter. One, because that's the most common density unit, particularly for chemists, but also we can compare it with our knowledge of what a reasonable density would be on planet Earth. Again, we can use the fact that using the commutative and associative properties of numbers, I can break this computation into a powers of 10 part and a non powers of 10 part. So the non powers of 10 part, the number part is 130.831 divided by 67.83395. And then the powers of 10 part, to the right is going to be 10 to the minus 23 grams, divided by 10 to the minus 24 cubic centimeters. When we do our computation, we always, 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 we write the units at every step. If units are required, we write them every single step, no matter what. Okay, so now we compute the non-powers of 10 part, and when we do that, we see that this is equal to 1.9287. And then our powers of 10 part, we have 10 to the minus 23rd divided by 10 to the minus 24. When we divide powers of 10, we subtract the exponents. So our new exponent is going to be minus 23. So just kind of put this up to the side. So what we're doing with the exponents is we have minus 
23 minus a minus 24, which is equivalent to minus 23 plus 24, which gives us an exponent of 1. And our units are grams per cubic centimeter. Last but not least, to convert this to a pure number and not a scientific notation, the power of 10 thing, we realize that 10 to the first power is just 10. So that gives us a density for gold of 19.287 grams per cubic centimeter. Even after we've done that, we are not completely finished. We still need to do a reasonableness check on our result. And we see that 19 is pretty close to the border of our allowable densities. We had said that the most dense metals, osmium and iridium, have densities of roughly 22 grams per cubic centimeter, which puts gold at least safely within that border. But if we know things about gold, we realize gold is one of the absolute densest metals. So this is not only within our limits of around 1 to 22 grams per cubic centimeter, but it's at the high end, and that's in keeping with what we already know about gold. So therefore, we feel doubly sure that our result of 19.287 grams per cubic centimeter is a correct result.